Welcome to a place where we celebrate in the art, in the culture, and the people that color our world with their gifts. My name is Camille. I'm your host, and this is the Soul Dope Show. I would like to welcome Aaron the Prince to the Soul Dope Show. Finally, turn up, turn up, Mama made it. (laughs) Welcome. The show. I'm so excited to have you. Um, really excited because this is our second time really collaborating this year. Feels like the RB Soul case was a million yeah. years ago, but really it wasn't. <laughs> it was just a few months ago, but a lot happened in between. Absolutely. Years. Yeah, so let's talk about that first. Completely unorthodox, because usually I start with the origin story, like how'd you get your start, etc. But we're yeah. gonna talk about the show. So okay. Back in the spring, at some point, I don't even remember because I was like May. pregnant and it was a fog, but whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> I threw an R&B showcase and I had four shows. All of them sold out. Absolutely amazing. Spring 22. Um, and Aaron was one of the artists that featured at a so dope showcase and completely blew everybody away. So... Yeah. <laughs> Love for you to give your insight on. I think that was your first. No, that wasn't your first yeah. time doing something with So Dope because you did our anniversary open. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. was the first like featured big deal. Mm-hmm. Thing. So absolutely, let's talk about that. Let's get into it. What your experience was like, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> okay, for sure. So first of all, I want to say that I was so grateful to be selected. I know that you had a long list of artists to choose and you could have chosen anybody in the city. So I was grateful for you for um, looking in, at my art and um, seeing that it would be fit for your event. Which, you know, you've been doing this stuff for a while, a long time. So I'm honored to just be a part of the the magnetic energy that you present um so i thought it was amazing i, I want to of course always start with giving you your kudos because as somebody who is in a business sector i'm an artist but i'm also a businessman and um, your business acumen has always been top tier you know i've been to your shows in the past and even my experience was the same um you know you you make sure that we are our artists are compensated um, that things run as smoothly as they possibly can, you know. And so from that end of things, I thank you. Um, I was so honored to be a part of that. Um, my experience, I will say I was nerve wrecked, okay? <laughs> because, you know, being quite honest, this was my first uh, feature, right? So before I've always, well, since I've been performing over the past three years or so in different outlets, I'm not never like the headlining artist. Headliner. I'm like the, the headliner. Yeah, <laughs> headliner, right. I was always just like a, one of the featured acts or what have you. And so, you know, of course, being a headliner, you got to bring it. And so, you know, of course, I was preparing myself accordingly to do just that. Um, And so, yeah, it was just nerve wracking to get to the event, like leading up to it. But and also, um, I believe I was out of the country. I had just came back from Jamaica and had to learn choreography as soon, literally as soon as I landed. Well, actually, they sent me the video of my choreo while I was in Jamaica. I had orchestrated my dancers and choreographer to get busy. I did not choreograph, even though I am a choreographer. I wanted to have somebody else's stank on it. But um, so nevertheless, I got the video and I was like, all right, bet. let me practice this while I'm on vacation. And then came back. And literally when I came back, it was like the week of the show. And so I only got two rehearsals to try to learn the choreography, like two official rehearsals. And we were on on Saturday. That was pretty much how it went. So vocally, <laughs> I felt that I was OK. Um, I, I tried to make Make sure during that week I rested accordingly because prior to obviously I'm in Jamaica shouting, screaming, drinking, yeah. doing all the bad things that are not good for your voice and just not good for the all physical stuff. But I needed that moment. 
And so I hit the ground running and, um, you know, I was excited that it sold out. Of course, you know, that's always a blessing. Quickly, Yes, it did. I mean, people really showed up for you. Really. Yes. And then they not only did they show up by buying tickets, but they showed up with good energy to give you when you were on stage. Like and that it wasn't just the people are sitting here staring and not. Yeah. Angry. They were having a good time and that. You can't beat that as an artist, whether it's two people in the audience or 2,000 people in the audience. The energy facts. is what makes it feel, like, amazing. Mm-hmm. And I ain't going to lie, it was hot that day. And, you know, we had our little background issues. I felt that, you know, now, obviously, you know, the show must go on. In the moment, though, like I was like, man, I don't think I'm performing my best overall because I, w I was up against, you know, the, the climate or what have you. But we toughed through it. And I think that. <laughs> The people in the audience never cares about what the hell's going on in the background. They want to see a show. So I hope that from their experience, at least from what I was uh, told, that, you know, I gave them the just dues that they were looking for. So and that was my first real introduction as a full artist. So people can kind of see a little bit of what I do. Um, a lot of stuff I've been doing, I've been performing my songs, but I know in this genre of things people love for you to do covers and stuff so i wanted them to kind of get a sense of songs that you know are um dear to my heart and that i could step into my artistry and give my version of you did, you know. right you blended um covers that meant something to you made them your own but did your original stuff with dancers and the whole like the whole night it was a whole a show that you can pick up and travel with wherever and really entertain mm -hmm. people um a lot of times most times and yes i've been doing this for a while mm -hmm. people get uh cover happy and don't yeah. really do their own art but it's like mm -hmm. i always feel like you know brandy is already brandy and we already know her song I want to know what you do and what mm -hmm. what your thing is. I sing covers. I love to mm -hmm. sing a cover because mm -hmm. I mean something to you and you want to like do a rendition or whatever um, and present it, you know, in your way. But there's nothing like getting to know an artist and what makes them tick um, and when and seeing them present who they are through their work. So that was really the idea behind the R&B Soul Case where mm -hmm. it wasn't a cover show. Like when I, you saw the list, you were required to sing your own things. And that is almost unheard of. <laughs> like, yeah, you can throw a cover in, that's fine. Uh, you know, make it good. But mm -hmm. if you want to hear your stuff, I want people to get to know you. I want people to get to know what you're doing. And I think mm -hmm. that is why um, that particular series was so successful because people do want to, want to see that they want to get to know us they want to see you know hear something new we've, we've, heard all the, we've heard all the other songs a million times but what is it that that you do that's original and you definitely came and gave them um even just with your performance and having the dance card and doing the covers your original music how you interact with the crowd um just really giving people um an experience uh, giving them a show that's <laughs> like, it. That's it. and I got nothing but great feedback like thank like, you that's because of how he presented like everything so mm -hmm. I hope that's very encouraging to you um and I've seen you know since then like you kept you kept the momentum going and uh I like to love to see what's going to happen next for you no you're absolutely right like the combination of everything. The reason I threw the covers in was, you know, that artist connection to the to the audience. And so that kind of wins you over when it's something they recognize. But also I wanted to, them to get an opportunity because sometimes when you write music um, you, and you write it in such a way where it doesn't 
especially what's released, I should say. It didn't give them the full gamut of what I can do, yeah. especially vocally and so forth. So I was like, okay, let me throw in some covers mm -hmm. just so people can see my range or, you know, get a, a experience my range in that way. And also uh, blend it in with the show. But yeah, I'm a show pony, honey. So <laughs> I, do, I do like to come with the full... <laughs> You know, situations, um, you know, a lot of people don't know that mm -hmm. the Prince actually is short for the Prince of the stage. Okay. So anytime <laughs> I hit a stage for whatever reason, we're giving a full show. You know, it's not, that, that I've been goes inspired. Into what I was going to ask, when somebody mm -hmm. walks away from one of your shows, what do you want them to take away? That, that that this man is a consummate showman. No. Um, all throughout, of course, I get <laughs> all, all throughout that, that you know that I am fully immersed in my art. Um, that I am, I like to say, well versed in my art. Um, that I'll be bringing something also, I think, a bit unique to the stage. Um. I don't see often too many people doing the singing and dancing stuff, let alone doing it live. I sing live every time, um, you know, for good and bad. You know, you get better. Some performances aren't, you know, can be better than others. But it is a challenge yeah. to try to do both. <laughs> and I... Crazy. <laughs> 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 you're not going to see me do that it's never going to happen like, I'm looking a little bit. you're not going to see Florio, like I'm, I'm just not going to do it and I got asthma like it's not happening <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah so, and it's you know so that's pretty <laughs> Right. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I want people to see, you know, when they leave a, a set that I've done, like that I've really made an imprint and that you're going to, I'm going to stand out in my own way, you know, that's, that's it. So why, why music? You were killing it in fitness for those of you who mm -hmm. don't know, like out here getting it. Thank you. Um, training court and being a choreographer all the things and then at what point did you decide you know what I don't want to be an art like for real for real I'm going to do this so um and I'm glad that question came that the question is here um I have been training for this my entire life okay <laughs> um as most of us, like I came out the womb uh, dancing and singing. Um, I have a lot of musicians and singers in my family. So I was always around it. Um, I grew up in a household where, uh, for example, my grandparents, we would go there regularly in the summertime. And my mom was a young mother. So we spent a lot of time with them. And they were from the old school, church school, Elyria, Ohio. You know about it. That's where you from born. <laughs> uh, me too, emh all day so um you know in the way they're old school southern so it was um a, we had piano in the home and they had also two organs um guitar at the house, at the house. <laughs> two whole organs in the two living in the room house. <laughs> two organs in the living room and a grand piano that that's how serious this thing was so i grew up around music and i first started like just playing the piano playing around with it and i noticed like because they were church and they only wanted us to do hymnals and all of that stuff but i would hear secular music and try to play it and i learned to play by ear and so I already knew that I had a, a decent voice. So I started, you know, singing and playing. And of course, dancing was mixed in that too. Mm -hmm. And so I've been doing that my whole entire life. So by the time I became like, around nine, I want to say, I saw, no, it was around eight. I saw my dad, he had an MC Hammer VHS tape. So I was in the closet being nosy oh. and probably could have been in there. It could have been some porn or something, but thankfully it was not. <laughs> <laughs> so I pulled out this closet. VHS. Come on. <laughs> so I pulled out the VHS tape 
and pop it in. It's MC Hammer. And I'm like, this was my very first time oh, seeing this level of entertainment. And on that show, I was blessed because on that show it was MC Hammer and TLC. And they were the opening act. So it was a two for one. This was when he was on his tour. And so I was like, <laughs> Yeah, Hammer does boy. not get enough um, recognition for what he did and what he was doing at that time, which was he was a megastar. Just top to bottom. <laughs> Everything he did was just big. So I can imagine little kid you being completely blown away by what you were seeing in front of you. Because I had, I was, of course, familiar with Michael Jackson and, you know, all of that. And Michael, I was learning his choreography and, and singing along to his music. But it was something about Hammer when I seen that, <laughs> and the production of it all mm -hmm. and the energy with his dance moves and stuff like that. That kind of set it on fire for me, you know, and, and, and I knew at that point, OK, I'm supposed to be in entertainment. Like I'm supposed to be singing. I'm supposed to be dancing. I'm supposed to be doing all of that. And so, you know, in my mind, I was like the Disney kid. So I perfected my craft, um, you know, both vocally and, uh, you know, uh, dancing. And so like I started creating choreography and doing all that. I started singing even more, you know, focusing on like the solo art of it, um, not just singing along with a record, but actually like, how do I sound, you know, what makes me unique, you know, tone and all of those things, intonation and all of the things that we, you know, learn about through music. So I started to kind of learn that early and that was what sparked it. And I just knew, I just knew, knew, knew that I was going to be an entertainer. Nobody could tell me different. And so by the time Usher came out, you know, he's kind of in our peer group. I was like, oh yeah, me and him, we're going to share the stage, that type of energy. And yeah, Aaliyah and that keep it coming. Like once all these people opened up, I was like, all right, yeah, this is absolutely what I want to do with the rest of my life. Yeah. But God yeah. has a way. You can. you can do it. They show you that you can. Do it. it can be done. It can be done. And yeah. God, I think, has a way of two things. Um, redirecting your path for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, like <laughs> I figured out early on that not I was never going to give up. I believe that there's no time in anything. So although I, you know, went on with life going, you know, doing being in all types of choirs and doing all of that stuff, it never left me. The passion for being in entertainment never left me. And I made my career in hip hop fitness, which was dope. And I spent a lot of time carving that out to make it successful and do all of that. But my passion is music. Also, I meant failed to mention I've been writing too. So I've been I started writing at around eight. I started doing poetry. I wrote my first rap at nine years old. Uh for this song called um, All I Want to Be is Understood. I was in sixth grade at Johnson Park Middle School, and that was just a choir song with no rap. And I came to the to my teacher and said, hey, I would like to write a rap in here. I think this song was a beat choir song. Can I write a rap? And she was like, absolutely. That's bold. And I went, <laughs> whoa, very bold. Oh. I went home, got got to it, pen and pad. I had my mom like put it, giving me a little starter on the verse, and then the rest, my I just killed it. And then I got to perform it, and I never forget, you know, those moments. That was like my yeah. first big, because I was this was we had a big event at the school. All the years were there, so it was sixth grade all the way up to the highest level. That's a big deal in middle school. Okay, come on. <laughs> And then I'm coming out with a rap that I wrote. So mind you how they played it, and I'll be brief, but we're singing our song, boop, boop, boop. I'm in the middle singing the song with the choir. And then all of a sudden I'm stepping up to the mic and they think, oh, he's going to sing, but I bust them open with a rap. You know what I mean? And the crowd went crazy. <laughs> 
<laughs> and after that, I was like, okay, yeah, this is where I'm at. This is where I belong. This sounds like a scene from Sister Act. Like, it's cracking me up because it is the time frame um, at this point. How perfect. And that's what a wonderful memory, which since then, and all the things that you've done, the hip hop fitness, you forgot mm-hmm. to mention that you dabble in acting. I know because I've seen it with my own eyes. <laughs> I saw it. I was there. I saw it. More of that. Phenomenal. Thank you. More of that. But what is your, I know music is a thing, but what is your favorite thing about being an artist when you land in bed and you're thinking about it? What makes you like, oh, I love this shit. <laughs> <laughs> so it it started it used to be um like I think like the the vanity of it all. <laughs> and I'm saying that in a way of performing, like I just like to perform because I can't and all of that getting dressed. Yeah, it was that. But now as I'm older, much older now, I see the value in just being able to express myself. Yeah. And so I believe now when I do my art, it really is about freedom of expression, being, you know, making your stamp. And, and and creating the identity that you want people to have left with, you know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So let's say I'm in the car. It's one of my favorite questions. Um, with my homies or you know whoever, and I am going to play them one of your songs. Mm-hmm. They don't know anything. They ain't never heard anything. And I'm pretty sure I asked you this at the showcase, but we're gonna pretend like I didn't. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> what song should I play for them first, introducing them to you as an artist? Um, well, of course, I guess it's gonna be Little Mama Work. Okay. Um, because the song is upbeat, and so um it gives you a a, a feel for what my artistry is and um how I write music, right? Um, that that song is written in a way that it sounds like I'm talking about a female in a very sexual manner, but it absolutely has nothing to do with that. It's all about a, a woman being on her boss shit, running it, and yeah. you know, and being hard to get out here in these streets. Yeah. So. I mean, but you can twerk to it in the club if that's what you yeah, want. For to sure, do. for sure. It's <laughs> upbeat, you know, which is why we dance to it, yeah. you know. But yeah, for sure. So I think that I shows like that. people who I am as a writer. Um, it doesn't really show me vocally a lot, and I did that on purpose because um, I got a lot of stuff going on. But I think it gives them an idea of my personality and the energy that I have. So. It absolutely does. I would I would say that is a, a signature. Like we all have a song that people are going to expect to hear. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or like after. So five years from now, when I come to a show, I expect to at least hear a snippet of that. <laughs> and I hope people will still want to hear it. They still want to hear because you're going to dance. You're going to have yeah. a good time. Come on, come on. You're going to feel motivated. You're going to feel sexy. You're going to feel mm-hmm. powerful. And yes. that is a message that never gets old. You can't, there's no timeline on that right. <laughs> at right. all. Right. Okay. All right. All right. So let's do, let's do my dinner party question. <clears throat> I remember one of your answers was Prince. So if you're not at the show, act like you were at the show. Act like you're hearing this for the first time. Right. <laughs> so it's the R&B dinner party. Actually, we can switch it up. We don't even. It doesn't even have to be R&B. It can be anybody that has inspired you, or you think it's cool, or that you would like to have a dinner party with, dead or alive. Yeah. Okay. Artist, musician, actor, whatever. How many? Five. You get five. five. Okay, because you know I'll keep going. But okay, so, <laughs> it's gonna be a whole a, a whole party party. <laughs> come on, so it's definitely got to be Prince. Um, uh, and part of the reason why my name is the Prince. Um, you know that is my close to my heart. Although I got Jimi Hendrix on the day, but anyway. Um, but Prince for sure, just for that expression, you know, uh, I mean, not only was he a phenomenal artist, but it's the expression for me, you know, you know, he made sure he stood out 
in his own right. So I love that. Um, next, I would definitely have to say MC Hammer, as I said. He's my showman, consummate showman, so he must be present. I think he's going to bring all the energy to the table. Um, B.B. Winans, mm -hmm. I think I mentioned this at the Soul Dope thing. When I hear that man's voice ever since I was a kid, like it's something about his voice. You know, there are so many amazing, great singers, but there's something about his voice that soothes me, gets me height. I mean, he does it all for me. So definitely BB. And I, I think he's one of those people that is um, not recognized enough to. I, I was my watching a podcast and someone mentioned brought him up like mm -hmm. how his vote and like if bb winans was an r&b singer he would have killed everything <laughs> and it's true it's absolutely true but i feel the same way about cc winans too like their voices god was in there touched their mother's womb and was yeah. like, it's to come on come on here you go <laughs> i can send them out here for us so what a gift what a yes gift. i love it yeah. Okay. So we got Prince. We got BB. Who did I? Who did I forget? M MC Hammer. Hammer. Okay. So now I want to add some female energy to the table. So um, of course. Now this is, uh, it's always going to be Brandy. I love. I'm big, 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 big fan of Brandy. Always have been. So definitely Brandy, and. Hmm, the last person. When you narrow it down to five, it can make it a little difficult. But just because she's everybody's auntie, I'm going to go with Nippy. Yeah, I knew it. Because <laughs> Nippy, <laughs> we got... The energy at that table, the, the stories at that table, the laughter at that table, the profanity at that table, the prayer at that table. <laughs> What a party. Maybe no, I shouldn't say that. Never mind. Side eye at that party. Never, never mind. Never mind. You know what I was gonna say. You can say it. You can say I was it. gonna say there may be drugs at the table. <laughs> There's drugs at the party. <laughs> I know some people participate. Now BB <laughs> might side eye it, but you know. <laughs> He might say that. That's why I threw a prayer, like the prayer at the table. You know? Yeah, but let Nippy do what she do, okay? Mine has been in this industry for a very long time in, in, in many different circles, so I'm sure he has seen it all. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely seen it all. Absolutely. All right, so um, before I do uh, my run-through of some fun things, what do we have coming from you? Are we going to get a full project? Like, what's coming up? So um, I do have a new single, actually, that is in the works. My feelings, I'm so elevated, flying high up in your loving, baby. I just can imagine coming down. But the song is absolutely fire. It is R&B. Um, you know, when they were like, R&B is dead, I, I was cracking up because I'm like, man, y'all don't even know what I'm working on. This was prior to. And so it's going to give you sonically what you're used to in the old school R&B, like where we 90s R&B vibe. Um, I'm singing, yeah. you know, so, you know, I think people are going to be like, oh, <laughs> we have a tendency as artists to just create and then sit on things and overthink it and over plan and not and i am a very i am a planner i am a me too a plotter outer but sometimes you have to just release the thing <laughs> just release it and just make sure that you keep promoting it once that is yep. out so that it just yep. doesn't disappear i'm not yep. gonna go out there and do nothing because that doesn't work but mm -hmm it out there and make sure people see it and perform it and let the thing do its thing but absolutely some of this stuff off of these hard drives people like put give the people the music people saying r&b is dead like makes my blood pressure i know because i listen to r&b constantly and it's not 90s r&b very rarely do i listen to like put on unless it comes on a playlist because mm -hmm. 
you can hear 90s R&B. Go out. Go to a lounge. Go to a club. Go to a bar. Go to a party. Yeah, don't play it. Sit in my car. Turn right. on the TV. We are not. Like, the 90s R&B is still very much alive. But so mm-hmm. is new music. People did not. God did not stop making talent in 1999. Sure did not. Did not end the talent there. <laughs> like, <laughs> the army is not there. Y'all just take some time, you know. Take a look. Yes, you gotta you gotta really search for. It. And we are blessed to be like in the vein of people like that are still doing that. So I have uh, that upcoming and uh whenever i just drop it because that's what it's gonna be and then yes i am working on an ep i've been working on that for a while you know how the back end process and yes. stuff go you know and i was one of those like i can be a stickler because i am a sagittarius fire Thank sign you. i'm passionate <laughs> And because we're very goal oriented, I'll be wanting things to be done. I like to shoot the target and be done. But I am learning through the process that patience is a thing for a reason. And yeah, so, you know, just pushing through, you know, the minor obstacles that come. But yes, EP prayer for 2023 but also i'm going back old school i decided with this that i don't i'm not just i know new school vibes everybody just release music boom 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 i'm from the school where people work their records so this is why little mama went on its route for a whole year you know this whole year and i'm just performing and working that and my other record freaky mood and my other couple songs that i have too um out so you know i just really been working put all that on the ep put it all on no they will oh they will be um but yeah i believe in working a record and not just dropping music kudos to those who can do it like that i think that's dope um but i'm i'm understanding the value and taking my time and really letting uh what my art live yeah. without being saturated by the next thing well you get out there and you perform and you meet people and you network and you go to karaoke or you might be at a showcase or whatever and that's very important yes the internet is great where you can connect with anybody in the world like at the at the tip of your fingers but the human connection that makes people like um makes you endearing and makes people Mm -hmm. feel like they really like had a moment with you you can't really do that as much on the internet as you can going out and shaking a hand or you know dapping somebody or elbow on them because germs (laughs) or whatever right see your face and be in your presence (laughs) your real life presence because online presence It's not the same. I mean, for me, like I'm the same at all times, but it's still not completely the same as sitting in a room and having a conversation with me, you know, and looking in the eye or, you know, seeing you sing or perform. Like so you do that. You do get out here and get in about and don't completely rely on the internet. So you couple those things, you do just fine. We're gonna do just fine. I'm excited. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we be we be working, but I <laughs> I just I remember coming up, you know, in the old school was they dropped one song, that song Forever. could go on <laughs> Then you finally get a follow up single or what have you, you know. And so I want to. I don't want to be microwavable. I yeah. want to continue to be oven baked. And, and I'm back into they. We have okay. So in our to our benefit, we have better access to making music. Like it's mm-hmm. not like yes, you gotta sell your soul to even get mm-hmm. in the studio. So we can produce like crazy so we just we're figuring out how to combine that old school with the access that we have you can find that, that mm-hmm. spot. And, yeah. and it takes a while you know you got to keep trying different things so this time you might just like you said i'm gonna just put the song out and yes. then with the ep you ain't gonna just drop the ep no. <laughs> like a combination yeah. of things you know right right but definitely yeah i'm excited to see and then I think as I, you know, because there's another song I'm going to drop too around the same time as a single too, because I do rap, you know, I like to rap, you know, I, as I mentioned, one of my first experiences was rapping and I'm very good with lyrics and um, 
you know, I just, I can rap. <laughs> so I'm going to rap there and I have some stuff for that too. So, you know. Confidence. You can teach I me. Mean, like, I can do this. I do, I do this. <laughs> what I do. I'm, I'm starting to, because I am very humble. Those that know me, they know in real life that I will never, you won't even know that I even do music or am a fitness instructor or whatever people believe the accolades that I have. I won't go into a room like presenting them. Um, mm -hmm. But I have learned in my almost near 40 years that you do need to vocalize what you do well and be intentional about that so people respect you that way too, you know? know? Like, don't ever assume that somebody knows who you are. Yeah. You walking around. Yeah. Because they don't. Know. Yeah. <laughs> they might not, they may not have, never heard that song, knows, knows that it's this. I always say a song, I may sing it a million times and it's old as hell to me, but it's always new to somebody. Somebody else, yeah. Okay, let's do my 30 seconds of joy. So I don't know. I do this thing where I put a timer on. Okay. Think of something that makes you like crazy happy, blissful. It can be something silly. It could be food. It could be people. It could be whatever. Whatever you want. Something that just brings you joy. And for 30 seconds, you just gush and tell the people about your thing. Okay? Oh, gosh. Think about that something. requires thinking. <laughs> I mean, we've had... Everything from snacks to weed to uh, it to cartoon, like anything. Okay. <laughs> okay, you ready? Do you have a thing? I'll give you a second. Yeah, because I got to think of a thing. Okay. Um, Cause so much makes me happy. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. This is Aaron the Prince. His 30 seconds of joy on the Soul Dope show starting now. Okay, so one of the things that makes me happy is art in all facets and all things. I love expression. As you can see, I got my bright on shirt on the back. So, you know, we we express in Jimi Hendrix, but I love music. I love acting. I love dancing. I love all things art. I like to look at art. I like to draw art. Um, I like to do all of those things. So anything art related inspires greatness in me. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Before That's we wrap it up, can you leave an encouraging word or a message to everyone that's going to be watching this? Um, yeah, can we do that? Yes. So um, don't stop chasing your dreams. Don't stop believing you are what you believe you are. And I also believe that once you start doing the work, faith without works is dead is what we're told. And once you start doing the work, you will be surprised how God will magnify it and how you will become a magnet for all the things that you're seeking. And so you no longer will be seeking them. They will be, it will be seeking you. So that is my word of the day keep dreaming keep believing keep yeah. doing and you will always run into greatness there amen thank you so much for being on the so dope show thank you thank <laughs> you i'm super grateful i do have to just say again thank you for having the platforms to allow artists to be great we really especially a new artist like myself you know i'm super grateful um it does help with the exposure and then it, it just helps to know that people kind of like you you know <laughs> yeah encouraging <laughs> words nothing but love i will see you around town i'm certain of it <laughs> sure. all right we did it show, show.